Hey guys, in this video, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to show you how to actually make alphas two different ways. We have a little tree here in our little environment, and uh, what we're going to do is going to use some of Maya's paint effects to get some really quick branches to make for alpha. It's a good base to work off, and from there, <clears throat> you can elaborate in Photoshop and make it even more detailed. But I'm going to show you how alpha maps work, um, what they do, and how they can help you with your scene. And uh, I'm going to show you how to apply them appropriately so that we can get a the best possible results for this tree. All right, so I'm going to keep everything within the same scene. Um, let me go and switch my view real quick. A lot of people don't realize that this tool exists in Maya. It's been around for a very long time, since like, I don't know, Maya 4. <clears throat> and it allows you to actually use paint effects for certain things. Unfortunately, it's not a very robust tool. Um, you cannot render mental ray with it unless you convert it to geometry because when it comes in it doesn't come in as a geometry it comes in as a uh, an expression that someone has written and it actually produces these uh, items it's almost like they made a secondary tool but you can make plants people write expressions for it make plants and you can actually grow them over time so it, it, it's kinda cool but for what we're gonna do we're not gonna animate them because they are animatable what we're gonna do is go to our general editors go to visor and I'm using 2013 for this one um, but the, uh, the system still works just the same <coughs> sorry about a little asthma tonight um, so we're gonna go to plants and in plants we can choose different plants that we want but in this case we're gonna go to let's do trees plants are cool I can probably show you that in another demo Let's go straight to trees just to save some time. Um, so we can choose all sorts of different trees we want to work with. There's an oak one. There's a maple cluster if we wanted to. In this case, I'll just do oak. And you see your brush will come in. Now mine's set to feet. This all depends on how big you set your initial size. Mine's set to feet so I can show my class how to use physical sun and sky, which I'll have a video for that next week. I'm going to keep my finger on the B key here and I'm going to increase my brush size, get it bigger. Oh, sometimes it uh, can fight you a little bit. Keep my brush size there, keep my finger on the B key. There we go. And I'm literally just going here and just increasing the size of our brush, just making it big enough so we can paint. I think that's about, that's good enough. So, what I'm doing from the top down, and I like to paint from the top down because you have a little bit more control of your camera angle. I'm just going to paint in here some branches, just a few. One's dead, one's alive. I'll make another one here. And you'll see that it paints for us. Now, to make sure I can see what my render area is at, I'm going to go to my uh, camera settings. I'm going to turn on my resolution gate. Right now we're at 640 by 480. Let's change this bad boy to much higher. We'll keep it on my software is fine. Um, so we're going to make his size go up to our maximum. Um, let's do 1080 is pretty good. We could even go as high as uh, 1280. Let's do 1280 in this case. Nice robust size. Go to my software. Let's set this to production quality. and That'll give us the best possible render for this bad boy. So we can now see where our limits at with our screen. So we can get in pretty close. And I'm probably just going to leave this guy as is. Let's render it out. It's going to be ginormous. And the cool thing about using this is you can actually see the alpha and how it's going to be rendered. So what I'm doing here is I'm rendering a paint effects tool. And again, I'm doing it, doing it in Maya software. You can't do it in Mental Ray and unless you convert it to Geo. And in this case, we're just going to use this guy the way he is and I can take it into Photoshop, crop him down to the size that I want. In animation, you're not really restricted on your resolution size, but in games, you have to keep it in increments of two. And that limitation uh, hits right around at the highest of 2048 um, for most engines. Um, maybe Crytek's a little different because it's so amazing. But um, overall, let's just keep it at 2040, even with Crytek. I'm just being goofy. So we go to File. I make myself laugh. Let's go to uh, Save Image. Let's go to Targa. And in this case, I'll just slap it on the desktop. Don't always recommend that, but in this case, we'll do this. Um, branches, call it. 
Again, keep it as a target. Hit save. So let's open up Photoshop. And let's go to File, Open. And we'll go to Desktop. There's that me updating my blog and the character I'm working on. I got excited. Every edge that I welded was so exciting. Um, we'll go and grab our target. There's branches. I guess I need to clean my desktop. You didn't see that. All right, so we got this right here, and I'm going to crop it a bit because it's a little bit big. We'll keep it uh, fairly square. Now you can go in here, and this is the nice thing about using this tool, you can see that an alpha has been created. If I just select the alpha by itself, you see it's actually pretty clean. This is the nice thing about using paint effects. Sometimes you will get gray areas depending on the type of tree that you select or branch or even plant. Um, they may come out a little bit weird or odd. Oh, easy. It might be a little bit gray coming in. And when they're gray, this is the thing. This is the concept of alphas I have to explain to you guys. Alphas, in general, allow you to create an object which is trans semi-transparent or transparent in certain areas. In this case, we have a branch. We want to be able to keep our branches here. And you can see it turn uh, red. That's because my alpha's on. But we want to be able to see the branches and not see around the branches. So when it comes to an alpha, what you'll do is you can create an alpha channel here, new channel. And from there you can paint, and I'll show you that in just a second. But the luxury we just had with Maya is when I created those um, branches, I painted them out, is it produced an alpha because Maya will always give you a default alpha here in your render view. It'll show you what it's going to look like if you export it out with an alpha map. And the file types that we chose were, we'll do apply and close, let's do save in general. Um, we can choose Targa, that has your alpha information. TIFF has your alpha information and PNG. Now the other ones, not so much, but those are the main guys. Those are the guys that work really well that Maya can play with for the most part. He can work with without giving you too much trouble. Every once in a while, may not like a TIFF. And I'm trying to find out why that changes every other build in Maya. Like it likes a TIFF, doesn't like a TIFF. Likes a target, doesn't like a target. Sometimes likes a PNG, doesn't like a PNG. And I'm thinking that's just um, graphics card associated, but I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that one. Um, so just be careful that be aware that sometimes it may not work, and if it doesn't, just switch to a TIFF or a PNG. Okay. All right, I had to make that statement there. So we have our alpha built in. And again, white is for keeping. Black is discarded in this channel. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my color. And when you have your alpha on with your RGB on, you'll see a red mask go over your um, picture. This is old school. Now, I'm from the old school. And when I started graphic arts, we didn't have Photoshop. We used a thing called RubyLIF, and that RubyLIF was red. And we would cut out images that we wanted to photo impose on another image using a special camera. Um, and that's what this, why this is red. They're trying to show you that. Sorry, it's a little history that you'll never, ever, ever be able to tell anybody. At least no one will date you if you have this conversation by yourself in the corner. All right, so we got that there. Cool. And uh, now what we're going to do is go to our layers. I'm not even going to bother with changing his size. But again, you want to try to keep an in increments of two. Um, in this case, we'll just say this is being done for animation. Save as. We can just save over what we have. I'll put save. And I'll say yes. You can keep it 32 is fine. Um, some software programs, it depends what you're doing. We may not like 24, but 32 should work just dandy. Um, and let's go and hit OK. And 32 gives you the maximum quality here. Da -da -da. So I'm going to go back in here, and uh, you can keep these uh, trees for another uh, in another file if you want to. I'm going to kill these guys because we don't need them anymore. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Okay, they're gone. So let's go back to our tree scene. We'll pretend we have bark in here. In this case, I don't. Um, and we're going to go in here and grab and make a plane. This plane, now you saw me show you in other videos how you can actually, when you uh, texture map, you can texture map an object and divide them up and use a deformer 
to get some unique shape to it with a less of a hit on your UVs. This is possible. Let me show you here though, what we're gonna do is divide them up in the beginning. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. You don't wanna make it too strong. In this case, we'll do three. And video games, even uh, technology now with computers and movies, hopefully you're not trying to use Maya on some sort of very old computer. But nowadays, what they allow us to do is actually have higher polys for things. In the old days, when we used to do alphas, this was just one single plane. And we would shove it together like a little party favor hanging above your head as you walk in to a party. I have no idea where I was going with that. But it'll actually um, slide together piece by piece, like little uh, pieces together. But in this case, um, we can actually go a little bit higher. And it, this all depends. If you're running out of space poly-wise, you might want to keep it a flat plane. But I divided this guy up pretty well. So let's go and assign a new material. We'll go to Lambert. Because Lambert's boring. That's fine. Let's go and find his texture for him. Go to File. Let's go and find it. He's on the desktop because that's where we left him. He's right by the parked car waiting for us. Uh, branches. There we go. Branches. Grab it. So let's hit the six key to see your preview of our object. What? Not too bad. But I forgot to put coordinates on here. So let's go and do that real quick. So we'll go create. Um, since he's a flat surface, planar map. Best fit plane. Hit project. There we go. Fits into our area. Pretty nice. And I can maybe scale them down just a tad. Move them into place. Boop, 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 boop. And um, now I can go in here and add a deformer. I'll use my hotbox, create deformers, nonlinear. We're going to go to bend. Bend, unfortunately, when he comes in, doesn't. He, may, he comes in, you got to keep in mind, he comes in up and down. Not all of these non-linears will come in equally, which is kind of sucky. Um, they'll come in at different angles. And that's okay, you can you can deal with it. You just go ahead and rotate your scene. And I probably need to rotate it one more time. My instinct tells me I need to rotate him towards us. Let's see if that, yep. So rotate him towards us a bit. Or actually, in this case, he'll be away from us. Finger of the J key. Do, 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 do. 90 degree angle. You can plug it in here if you want to. Go to bend again, go to curvature, and you'll see we can actually bend this if we wanted to. You can do it a couple times, but what this does, let me go and grab him and his partner. What this can do, this allows us to make our own little factory if we want to, of deformers. So I can actually make another one if I wanted to. But um, what I'm doing, Control D, I'll duplicate it, is I can make the tree look like it has a canopy. And if I want, I can even add another deformer. We'll just leave this guy for now and rotate it. And it gives kind of a fake three-dimensional quality to your scene. Let's duplicate it one more time, Control D, and I'm going to rotate this guy. And I'm going to maybe rotate him a little bit this way. And so it doesn't look at this like the same tree. Shh, don't tell anybody. And we got this here. And you can do another one. So you control D, I'll move them over here. And in this case, I'm gonna get rid of the deformer. Delete. You can even fool the eye, watch this, because we have a little bit of um, polyplane divisions we could play with. We could probably even make them a little bit more uh, Divided. I'm not going to bother in this particular case, but watch this. We can go in here and do another nonlinear. Nonlinear, where are you? Yeah, what's up, baby? So we go in here and we'll do like a wave. And the wave, and this is what I meant by not all of them come straight vertical. You can see this guy, Deformer, he's a rebel himself. What a jerk. And we can wave it out a little bit. Not too much. You got to be careful. You are limited on how many polys you have on your object, so you just have to be careful with that. And I can go in here and grab this guy. Hit Control D. And I can move him into place. Go and rotate this. Get him in there. And we can have another bunch of branches in there. I can do Control D again. Move this over. And you can, don't get me wrong, you can do some flat ones if you want to. 
it's not a big deal but what I'm showing you is how you can quickly get some trees and uh, get some details for your trees such as these plants and come up with some pretty cool stuff here you can see like this tree is, is lonely it doesn't have any friends I can change the scale people need to belong to the tree hair club for men um, I can go in here and grab another one control D duplicate it and I don't recommend using the same one the whole time what I do recommend is at least having three different variables or three different types you can actually tweak out and rearrange and so forth but again what I'm doing here is giving my trees a three-dimensional quality to them so that when you look at them you'll, you'll see that it actually looks like there's some actual branches on here and when you render it you'll be able to see hey look that looks like there's branches on there it's so weird I don't have any lights in here so it's not gonna be as fancy as we like um so you can see we can actually play with this pretty cool huh so that's real quick you can get that into your scene and make that as believable as you need it to be there we go we got branches up there just floating in the wind and uh, and if you want to add more to your scene <clears throat> you can always add another object or alpha and in this case we're gonna grab a leaf go to my hard drive And say you're like, yeah, well, Sean, that's cool. But well, I, I got some photos I like. Well, let me show you how to handle that. We go to, uh, let me see here. I believe it's week four. Let's see here if I got it in here. There we go, Mr. Reef. And uh, say you want to add this on the ground, or you want to add a flower even to your scene. Um, what we can do is this guy's all by himself in the world. He doesn't really have any friends. We're going to pretend you don't see this alpha. We're going to delete that alpha there. Um, so right now we have this scene and you want to be able to actually have it so we only see the leaf and not around it. Now you can do a quick mask but in this case a lot of times I like to use quick mask for um, for actually painting on top of the object and making it look a little bit sharper. You can also do that by switching just your your, your uh, paint tool properties as well as the type of uh, tools that you'll be using. They can go to pencil which is a lot sharper. So that's a quick way around that. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a, an alpha channel for us to paint with. So we're going to go to new channel. You can call this leaf if you want to. You can have multiple ones. You can even combine them if you wanted to. And you'll notice when I turn it on it's masked it out. So what we're going to do, let's go to our layers here. I'm going to select the outer part of this leaf and I'll do select similar and I'm going to go select inverse selection and um, you know the quick way you can change that is uh, you can set your hotkeys ahead of time if you want to but the reason why I'm inversing this guy is shift control I for that one and the reason why I'm inversing this guy is uh, what I'm going to do is go to my channels and turn on my uh, alpha so you can see what's going on and I'm going to dunk in here white because remember white is kept black is discard and gray is semi-transparent so I'm going to click on this guy BAM look at that now we see the leaf show up pretty nice so we go to the layers here there's our big fat leaf of justice and uh, with this guy set in you can see we have our alpha set up I'm going to flatten him oh, make sure I'm in the right one not channels but uh, layers and let's go to oh looks like we don't oh, that's right I forgot he's not all by himself I didn't double click on him so I need to flatten him so go save as and we go to leaf demo so let's go to we'll make this guy a target in this case and save okay so now when we go back into Maya I can make another polyplane and if you want to you can uh, divide them up a little bit so we'll do three and uh, we'll do assign a new material for every new object it needs a new material if it's going to have a texture on it and I go to line 3 open this up grab the file open this up and we are going to now grab leaf which is in our computer this guy there we go and we're going to go out
There he is. And open her up. And let's assign coordinates to this guy. So go planar map. And you can see we now have a leaf on our object. Let's go and scale him a little bit so he doesn't look retarded. Excuse me. Not quite the way we want. And you now see that we have this object. Let me turn wireframe on shaded off. And he is transparent. So he could be the biggest banana leaf you've ever seen. So you can put these on your scene. And if you don't want it to render, say you want a blood stain, you don't want the leaf, but you don't want it to render a shadow, you can actually go to this object shape node and go to the render stats and tell it to not cast shadows. Also, when you render, if you notice that it's starting to look a little milky, what you can do is go into the shader itself go to your ray trace options and to prevent that milky square that shows up you want to set set your um there's a lot of cysts in there you want to set your shadow attenuation to zero that'll prevent any weirdness now if you still see some white areas coming up that means your alpha needs to be cleaned up to do so these came in kind of nice but to do so you go into photoshop and when you look at your alpha channel you want to make sure and you can turn everything else off that you do not have any gray areas if you did not intend them. That can give you a milky outline. So you want to keep it solid black and um, you want to keep it solid black and solid white. White to keep, black to discard, and gray will be semi-transparent. What can also help with that is turn off anti-aliasing when you select. Anti-aliasing sometimes can be a really bad uh, enemy of alpha maps. So unless you wanted them, unless you wanted it to be semi-transparent like a dirty window, but in this case leaves and such things, not so much. All right, so that's about it for this one. So hopefully you guys understand this and it makes sense to you and hopefully it helped you out.